here. Oh, hello, 1101. Where are you? That's hair. On his left. There we go. No more touching hair, Wendy. My slim fold will shout. Stop fiddling with your hair. Good morning, good people. It's Ash Wednesday. Hello. Hello. Is anybody there? Clearly you are not. I'm waiting and waiting. <laughs> I'll keep waiting. I'll keep us on. Oh well. I'll keep us on and just see if you've got the time to join me. No more fiddling with hair. I'll be back in a second. We don't. Hello. Oh, there you are. There you are, Pat Sprout. And there you are, Lim Faulkner. Did you wonder where I was? I've been here ages, ages and ages. Oh, caught me on the hop a bit this morning. I've only put my rollers in at quarter past ten. And uh, as you can see, it's, um, well, it's there. And that's it. And take money, Judy. How are you? All right? Yes? It's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. It is. I'm hoping a, a drink's going to come in shortly. So that's what I've ordered. Uh, I'm hoping. Beyond all hope. No, not really. They're quite a decent bunch here. You know, my wish is their command or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Good morning, Sharon. Good to see you too. It is. Good to see you too. I'm over a bit, aren't I, today? You can't see my lovely book picture. Mm, morning, Marion. Good to see you as well. It is. Good to see you. It's great, isn't it? I love this bit. I do. I love this bit. Uh, apart from the fact that it's just really lovely to just be able to sit with you and make sure that you're all all right because it's hard to see each other in the flesh isn't it? It is. Oh, are you up? Cool deep. Hey, Curly, how you doing? <laughs> That's lovely to see you this morning. Hey, that business of yours been looking on Facebook. You'll be seeing me soon. You will. Seeing me soon. Thinking about a holiday. Uh, not till later on in the year, but I'll need to be jazzed up for my holiday. And you're just the girl, aren't you? Just the girl. Look out, for Curly. On Facebook, KSK Beauty Treatments, if you're into all that, which of course I am. So uh, I think it's a good way for me to take care of myself. Um, so uh, have a look at what she's doing because um, she's doing some amazing stuff. Good morning, Anne Gamble. Oh, good morning. That's not about, that's a bit of a boring cup, Reese. Where's my jazzy cups? I'm not, I'm not. Have you seen the cup he's brought me in? The, the tea inside it is magnificent because it's a proper cup of tea. I've got a little, well, I suppose it's got home on. I've got a boring cup. I am. A boring cup. As if. Never mind, eh? Never mind. There we are. All, um, we're all done and dusted. So. Yes. Can you see that, Sharon? Make sure that you've got a um, a connection for this evening. So, um, this evening we have a special 
uh, service. I better introduce myself first, haven't I? For those who tune in at a later date, uh, I'm Wendy Murphy. This is St Paul's Facebook page, and it's uh, it's 17th of February. It's 11 o'clock, and it's Wednesday. And of course, it's no ordinary Wednesday because today is Ash Wednesday. You know who I am by now, surely to goodness. My name's Wendy Murphy and I'm Minister for St Paul's Church at the bottom of Colton Hill. That one that faces Tesco's, that's it. That's the one. Uh, I thought it was going to be a bit chilly today when I kept looking out right early on. But actually, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful sky again this morning. Although I did... I, I did look at it really carefully this morning and actually it was moving quite um quite fast this morning and it doesn't feel windy or anything so good morning june brown we are praying for you for eileen and the rest of your family uh, as you mourn the death of pam so we are holding you in prayer be assured of that good morning june smith Good to see you. Good to see you. So then, if it hadn't have been for this blooming pandemic that's had us all upside down, back to front and inside out, hasn't it? We'd have been in church this morning because it's Wednesday and we'd have had a little communion service and I'd have put a cross on people's foreheads. Uh, should they have chosen to have that, the cross on people's foreheads and that would have been because uh, that's the day as Christians in the Christian calendar um, you would see um, that it is Ash Wednesday and you would see lots of pictures of people having an ash cross placed on their forehead and we do that too of course because we are Christians the ash comes from the burning of the palm crosses that we've had the year before and we bring them back to church they get burned if you've ever tried burning a palm cross anyway they're taken right right down into ash and it's those palm sunday uh, crosses that are used to ash our foreheads so and we make the sign of the cross and we say remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return turn away from sin and be faithful to Jesus. They're very powerful words, aren't they? So we're not in church this morning. We're here. Uh, oh, hey, oh, Pete's on. Look out. And Barbara Gordon's there too. You are very welcome, June Brown. So we're not in church this morning, as we all know, because church isn't open. So, But we are going to Zoom this evening. And we've got a special Zoom service, just a short one for about half an hour or so. Uh, it's me and Philip and we're going to be doing a special Ash Wednesday service. So if we've already said, if you'd like the link to that, um, see Pat, uh, she'll put her email up and you have to ask, you have to send your email to Pat because that's the world we live in. OK, so send your email to Pat um, and she will help you to uh, she will send the link. And if you can't do the email, there's a special number. Uh, there you go, Pat, right on cue. Uh, there's a special number that you can ring as well. So even if you think I can't do that, that's really difficult doing email um, phone in. Because you can do that. And if Pat puts her phone number up, because that's okay, you see, for Pat to do that. Because mine and Pat, being church warden, is Pat. It's out in the public domain anyway. So she's perfectly happy to put both those up. So there is Pat's email and there is Pat's number. So do join us for that really lovely service tonight by Zoom. So um, if... You can bring a small, and when I say small, I mean probably a saucer or a tiny little bowl. Uh, bring a little saucer of, or, or a little bowl, a receptacle of some kind that will, um, that you can put 
maybe one or two tablespoons of water in. And to find out what we're going to do with the water, you have to be there or be square. OK, so a receptacle of some sort and a couple of tablespoons of water is all that you need and all will be revealed this evening. Mm. Pretty powerful, that service, that Ash Wednesday service, I think. It involves touch, doesn't it? Which we can't do at this moment in time. The words that we say when we're doing the ashing, the cross, reminds us of the dust that Adam was made out of and then Eve out of Adam's rib. And doesn't dust just get everywhere? But it's a time for us to remember as Christians how very frail we are. That we are mere mortals. And I think sometimes we get to thinking, I haven't seen it yet, Lynn. Oh, I'll have, to, I'll have to have a look at it. Did, did I see that it was a video? We might put that up on Facebook, Lynn, if you can share it. Because um, I, I think I glanced. I've only glanced at emails. I haven't read them. Was it a video this morning, Lynn, that we can share on Facebook? Yeah? Well done, that Sharon. She sent a different... Thing. So we're thinking about, aren't we, being mere mortals and sometimes we actually think that we're God, don't we? We make decisions like we think we're in charge <laughs> and nothing could be further from the truth. Thank you, Lynn. That would be great because we're human beings. We're mortal. Went a bit funny then, didn't I? There are those that would say I'm always funny. And not in a ha ha way. <laughs> so it's on the, this day and other days, of course, that we remember even more so that we are here by God's choice. You remember, I've already said, He took Adam, didn't He? He, he, he took up the dust and He made Adam and He created him and then He created Eve. Then He created, well, before that, He created the most beautiful world, world even, for us. To be stewards of, depends which version of the Bible you read, to how, um, it, but anyway, to look after it. That's what we were put here for. So we made everything, the beautiful sky, every day. We made everything. He made everything. And then he said, you've got to look after it, girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to look after what it is. I have made for you. So, actually, in the beginning, to coin a phrase, it was not a bad life. And then we have to go and spoil it. Or, well, Adam and Eve went and spoiled it, didn't they? Because they thought they knew better than God. And it's really, in the good news version of this story, um, when God challenges Adam uh, and said, why have you eaten the apple? In true Adam style, sorry, gentlemen, in true Adam style, she made me do it. Because <laughs> sometimes we don't want to be responsible for our choices, do we? No, we don't. She made me do it. It was all Eve's fault. She was the one who bit the apple first. And uh, then, of course, Eve gave it to Adam and said, this is really great. Have a bite. And of course, he could have made a different choice, couldn't he? But you see, he didn't. And I think that I don't get caught up with that story. Some people do. I think it's a great way of helping us to understand man and woman's fall into sin. OK, so this is where it all started to go wrong for us, because we thought we were God. We thought we were better than God. By we, I mean Adam and Eve, the mortals thought that were better than God. So if we remember that we were and are made in God's image, he wanted perfection for us. He wanted a perfect life. And look at us. Look what we've done to ourselves. 
and to God's world. Good morning, Yvonne Swain. You're a sight for sore eyes, girl. How lovely to see you on here. So, what a mess we've made of ourselves and of God's world. There's a short verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. I'm not going to go into that this morning. It's just the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. And I think that's as true today as it was back in the Garden of Eden. All those many, many years ago. When, it's clear to me, when we make our own choices, we will come unstuck. We are on a path to nowhere and before long we're lost in a scrabble of bad wrong choices we could through our choices find find ourselves in a pit a deep dark pit of desperation and despair rummaging around trying to get out if we look up from our pits of despair, from our corners where our pity party is, if we raise our eyes up, God will bring other people alongside. And I know this. I know this to be true because it's been true in my life. So he brings people alongside to help us with our dis-ease. Not disease. Dis-ease. So together, me, God, maybe God, me, and the people that he brings alongside for that pit of despair to give us a hand to help us out will relieve some of our dis-ease. And if we carry on that journey of healing, then... It all follows on, doesn't it? It follows on as, as we make those tentative steps back to some kind of normality. We have to make that choice though. We can choose to sit in the corner and have our pity party and say, woe is me. And you know what? That's all right for a bit. I've been and had a fair few of them pity parties myself. But there comes a moment when we have to re look up, reach out, and God will be there. And he will send people alongside us to help us in that journey. So, as I've said, today is Ash Wednesday. You already know that because I've already told you. And this is where we begin, as Christians, our Lenten journey. Where we are encouraged... Some people will say, some people will be saying all day, right, on Sunday, especially, they'll be saying they're giving up chocolate, wine. In my case, it would be bread, although wine does come a close second. In my case, uh, bread, <laughs> beer. And, you know, that's all well and good. I've stopped doing that. I've stopped doing giving up things, to be fair. Because I always fail. And why would we set ourselves up to fail? God doesn't want us to fail. It want, uh, we can learn from our failings. But it doesn't want us to fail. It wants us to have a good life. So I don't give up. I try to take something on. And I do believe that this year, you know, how could we ask people to give anything up? Good morning, Anna. How could we ask people to give up more? How could we? When they have given up so much already. Even family members. You know, who they haven't been able to see. So why would we shake our finger and say, you need to do this and you need to do that? You have to choose what it is you're going to do. For me... I try to take on something. I try to make more of something. So I want to be bold this morning and I want to ask you to take on more. She says, 
fancies her saying that to me. Take on board. Don't you realise how much I'm doing already? I know. I know. So, let's not make, make it massive. Let's make it doable. Most of all, whatever it is you take up, take on and do more of. Because that's the idea of the Lenten journey, isn't it? So I was thinking um, that I could... Are you still there? It's one of them stupid numbers. So if you're thinking about, like me, I'm not going to give anything up because, uh, you know, by the time it, I give it up on Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent, and by the time Wednesday comes, I've even forgotten what I've given up and I'm drinking a wine or I'm tasting chocolate. More in my case, I'm eating more bread. So, no. I think what we could do is take on more responsibility for the choices we make. So maybe as we sit, and I know that's hard because I know how hard it is to sit, so maybe for me it's about sitting more, but sitting and being intentional with my sitting. So that could be praying, couldn't it? That could be uh, just being silent. Uh, before <laughs> I love it, Anne. That could just be silence, couldn't it? You could just be sitting, not have the telly on. Because that's a bit of a distraction, isn't it, the telly? I often find myself flicking through all the channels. Very rare that I find anything that actually really floats my boat. But And then I end up turning to Netflix and binge-watching series, which is no good for me at all because then I'm up till 12. And no, it's all, it all goes out the window, doesn't it? So it's all about choices. So when Pete went upstairs last night, I said... Um, you know, turn the telly off. I don't need it on. I just want to sit. I want to be quiet. And so that that's difficult. I'm not going to deny <laughs> it's difficult to sit quietly, to sit silently, because the minute I sit, there is a whole myriad of things that come into my mind. Get a pen, write them down. Then they're gone. For the moment. Then it's, then it's gone for the moment and you can carry on in silence. So while you're sitting, you might want to do more praying. You might want to just be quiet before the Lord so you can listen to what he's saying to you. Personally, you know, I like to walk and thank God and pray to God. And I, I love being out there in creation because and and i'm going to try and do more walking that's what i'm going to do because in in my walking i'm closer to god and i'm thinking about all that wonderful creation and the sky and the trees and the birds and the little tiny finches and the robins oh it's just how can you not feel close to god so instead of sitting in front of the telly, I'm also going to try and read a book. I'm not going to get three. I'm going to get one book. I'm going to look on my bookcase for the myriad of books that are there. I think I know which one I'm going to read. I may, it's not set in stone because I'm going to pray about it when I go into the study. It may be Richard Foster's Celebration of Discipline great book i have read it many years ago but let me tell you i don't do things over and over i don't watch repeats uh, of, of films pete does i don't i think what of a waste of a life you know but that's all right if you watch repeats all well and good that's your choice so instead of watching the telly i'm going to try and read a book i'm going to sit a little longer and i'm going to walk a little more none of which cost anything monetary wise but i feel sure we will be so much richer what you could do is open your bible study just one word 
And if you haven't got an a index, a concordance, a study Bible at the back, Google it. What about this? What about Googling the word choice or choices in the Bible? Because, you know, there are lots of people in that book that made some terrible choices. And yet, in the end, they made the right choice by turning to God, turning round. You can find those first people, Adam and Eve, where it all went pear-shaped, or maybe we should say apple-shaped, at the beginning in Genesis. And you look at the choices that they made. So there's your starter for 10. Have a look and see how many times choices are in the Bible. Look at Moses. Look at... Oh, somebody is um, cremating the bacon. So, God... There's your starter for 10. I'm getting distracted now. God created us. He loves us. And he wants us to be loving ourselves. And then we love those around us. He created us with free will. And God gave us that so that we can make the choice to follow him. Wherever that may be too. It may not be a smooth road. But he didn't promise a smooth road. What he did promise is that he would be with us in the scary bits. When we fell down the hole, he said, I'm going to be with you and be in that same hole, in that same pit and on that same road. We think at the beginning of Lent about Jesus being sent again. It depends which version of the Bible you've got. Jesus was sent, driven into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And I want to encourage you by the choice that he made. He didn't stay in that hard time, did he? Because he went through. It's always, I've, I've heard this about probably six, seven years ago. He didn't stay in the wilderness, did he? No, he didn't. He went through the wilderness. And that's a choice for me and you. We can choose to have a different life, a new life. That's what God wants to breathe. Just how he breathed life into Adam and Eve. He can breathe that life, that new life into each one of us. I'm going to leave you with that thought. Breathing new life into each one of us we have to choose to accept that free life even if you've had your vaccinations still wise to stay home stay safe and stay well the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and all those that you cannot be with at this moment in time. The Lord be gracious to you and bring you his peace in your choices today and every day. We ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I've got my tea to slurp. So uh, I'm happy to be here. I do have to pop off quite quickly. Uh, I have boys to take to work uh, today. And um, there we go. I will be here to, while I drink my tea. Thank you, Anna. Amen. Thank you for joining me guys, it's always good.
to be with you. It is. Enjoy my neck. Thank you, Lynn St. Ben, for pressing your button. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Amen. Indeed, Anne. You're very welcome, Sharon. Please don't forget, we're Zooming at 7 o'clock uh, this evening. Our Little Ash Wednesday service. We've got a couple of songs as well, which is great. Great that you've pressed your buttons. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Marion and Judith. Yes, absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. Sometimes, though, we need people to help us, don't, they, don't we, with the clarity. Those that know me well know that I, all, all my thinking is done out loud. So I say something, and I'm not very good at thinking on the spot. So I say something, or someone else says something, and I don't know how to respond to it, so I go for a walk. I peel a potato, and I think about it. And then I come back and I, I think that's a good way. It's a good way for me because then you get that um, that lovely um, reflection, which is the way, my, my perfect way of thinking, you know. So I can come back three days later with something that you said three days before and actually I can do that well, I can do that well. I, I'm, I'm not much good at thinking on the spot, but each to our own and that's good. It's good to know that about myself, isn't it? Because that's what God wants. We will see you later, Judith. Seven o'clock on Zoom. Yes, indeed, eh? I'm almost at the bottom of my tea. So, uh, I'm going to pop off in a moment. Good to see you all on here. Thank you for encouraging me and pressing your buttons. I hope that I have left you with a good thought. And please do, um, do join us later with your little bit of water. Okay. June, give our love to Eileen. And Anna, I'm glad you're a reflector too. It's good to know how we tick, isn't it? So maybe we need to choose more of those moments so we can understand ourselves more, so that we understand those around us more, isn't it? Oh, bless you. Have some good choices until we see you tonight at seven. And it's really great, Anna, that you can join us live. It really is. Yeah. It's good that you were with us. Take good care, everyone. God bless. Tea all gone. And so am I. Take good care. God bless. <laughs>